Facilitating and Leading Teams Lesson 5 Raising Group Engagement Levels How to Ask Better Questions and Get More Answers Too many leaders in too many meetings fail to effectively engage every team member in the meeting content, let alone the meeting process, as the meeting is being conducted. We waste valuable time together simply talking at people instead of talking with them. Value and limited time is spent reading people information that could have been reviewed ahead of time. We miss out on the true value of being together face-to-face. Dialogue, ideas, relationship building, and higher value decisions. Good group leaders recognize this. They're able to observe the group process as the meeting is being conducted. Questions are used in an effective manner to keep group members engaged and to bring out things that need to be said and reinforced. Good leaders understand the concepts of leaders speak last and look for opportunities to raise the collective self-esteem of the group through effective group engagement. This section of the workbook will explore the different ways in which questions can be used to raise group engagement levels. After you've invested the time exploring the concepts of good and bad question use that we share here, we're going to practice applying these concepts. Effective question use takes practice. In fact, it probably takes a lifetime of practice, but it's practice that's well worth the time. In this lesson, you'll also discover how questions can be used to check for understanding, to address problem behaviors in groups, and most importantly, to help everyone in the group contribute at a higher level during the meeting. Content specific to work group meetings will also be shared, as daily prep meetings such as tailboards are some of the most common meeting types used in today's organizations to help prevent errors and to make sure that customer expectations are being met. I'm confident you'll become convinced of the same thing that Peter Sange taught me years ago regarding questions, that there's more power in a good question than in any answer. Avoiding Unintended Trips to Abilene. And the title of this slide comes from a very vintage, but I consider famous video about groupthink called The Abilene Paradox. And you can still find it on the internet. And it's all about a family sitting on a hot Texas front porch on an August night, not knowing what to do. And Grandpa just kind of stuck, just says, well, hey, why don't we all just drive on over to Abilene and get some ice cream? Now, he didn't really want to go, but he was getting tired of sitting there in the silence, and so that's why he offered up the idea. Well, being Grandpa, you know, no one wanted to argue with him, so he said, oh, yeah, Grandpa, let's go on over to Abilene and get some ice cream. He's like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have brought that up because I really don't want to go. And then his wife goes, yeah, honey, I think that'd be a good idea. And so they all end up piling into the car, driving over to get the ice cream no one really wanted. Managing the dynamics of the group through the use of good facilitation skills help keep a group engaged. The worst thing a leader can do is dominate the conversation in a boring manner. You're going to lose them quick and lose them in more than the meeting room. Energetic leaders who vary their pace of speaking and tone of voice help keep groups more engaged. Asking questions and letting others contribute also drives engagement levels even higher. You want to keep groupthink from happening, and you want collaborative decision-making to occur. Using the four key facilitation skills we show here can help you achieve this goal. Be able to observe the group, keep group members engaged during the meeting, ask open-ended questions, and listen to and use the input and ideas from the rest of the team as the event progresses. Test the group for consensus when it appears that a decision has been made. You can do this by simply asking the group, can everyone in the group live with the choice that's been made? Don't just go by the vocal responses to your consensus test, however. Use your observation skills to see what their body language tells you. Being well prepared for your meetings or training session is key as well. You can use cue cards or a checklist if you need to in order to ensure key topics or thoughts are not forgotten, but it is important that you know what you're going to cover ahead of time. Don't hit it cold. Run through the presentation or meeting agenda for, before you actually get the group together. Attempt to anticipate where conflict or concerns might arise. 
Develop contingency actions to take should those challenges emerge. And you may not have to write them down, but think them through. Which issues are sensitive? What am I going to say if this comes up? Then when those challenges do emerge during the actual meeting or training session, you are prepared. Or at least better prepared. Too many leaders make the mistake of simply going through the agenda without paying equal, if not more, and I say if not more, attention to the group process as the agenda is covered. It does no good to cover the agenda if the folks are not engaged. You might as well go talk to the wall. This is one of the biggest challenges with leading a conference call when you can't see what the call participants are doing while you or someone else is talking. Oh, I trust that they're paying attention and staying engaged. Well, I trust that they're watching sports and playing Wordle. No, we, no. so we have to use good questions in involving multiple people in the agenda. That helps avoid disengagement during remote calls, and that's even on the virtual calls. Test the process regularly as well. When I say test the process, act, ask the group, let's do a process check. If we have a process monitor, ask them, how are we doing with the process? Question types to avoid. Before we start exploring the different types of questions you can use in different ways for asking those questions, let's take a quick look at question types that you want to stay away from if possible. Most people like to be, don't like to be put on the spot. They don't want to be blindsided. They don't want to be embarrassed in front of their peers. You also want to avoid questions that may confuse the group, raise sensitive issues, or raise up in negative emotions that might be attached to the questions. Team leaders and trainers often have more influence on a group than they realize. When you share information with people, and especially when you ask them questions, they continue to think about that content and those questions well after the meeting has ended. You're planting seeds in their mind. This can help you or it can hurt you. You need to be aware that your audience will take your comments and questions with them. They'll think about them further after the event's over. Avoid asking questions that are too big. Some people call such questions save the world questions because there's so many possible answers, so many variables that have to be considered, so many ways in which the question could be interpreted. Try to be specific in terms of what we're asking about without asking leading questions. Leading in questions, by the way, imply that you want a certain answer. You expect a certain answer. You weren't speeding, were you? You didn't take that last piece of pumpkin pie, did you? You did everything I asked you to, right? Those aren't good questions. They're both close-ended and leading. As you try to raise group engagement levels, try to also raise the self-esteem of everyone in the group. There's a lot of power and potential in your group, and it will actually make you a much more effective and better leader if you can bring out that power and potential in all your team. Asking good questions and directing them at a variety of people can help you achieve this goal. And if a person's a bit shy and you still want to engage them in the meeting, let them know ahead of time you're going to do it so they're more prepared. Conversely, asking questions that are vague, accusatory, or emotionally sensitive can work against that goal. Effective questions are necessary for raising team engagement levels, but their use has to be practiced and well thought out ahead of time. Types of questions. It would be easy to assume that listening was the key tool of a team leader. But I believe actually the use of effective questioning takes that title. Questioning helps you engage with your team members. And the effective use of questions facilitates the observing and listening skills we talked about earlier. Questions help you find out what is known already. They invite participation and involvement. And they help you obtain better evidence. Most importantly, they encourage each person to think for him or herself. Remember what we said earlier, when you ask a question, each person's mind automatically returns some type of answer. Even if they don't verbally state it, you can't see it, but it happens. So notice three types of questioning skills on a seemingly ongoing basis. So let's take a look at what we've got up here. First of all, we've got open-ended versus closed-ended. 
You may use an open-ended question, a yes or no answer question to start into a conversation, but it will stop a discussion if you're not careful. So 90% of the time, open-ended questions. What, how, when, describe, tell me more about. Try to avoid why as it can make people a bit defensive. Also think about, am I going to direct the entire group with the question? That's what we call an overhead question or a direct question where we go right at a person. And typically we're asking an expert, you might use it to draw someone in if someone's kind of being distractive. That's how you can stop a problem behavior. But be careful when you blindside folks. And you you might not think it's blindsiding, but they, they might. And then there's reverse questions. Always have to be careful with them as well. But that's where you either pass on a question or you answer a question with a question. And some people people find that a bit offensive. So you have to be careful with those as well. 